Our next speaker, actually, uh, he is the founder of uh, this school. He started it around 20 years ago and was a pioneer in Philippine education for uh, international uh, learning and entrepreneurial education. So here uh, to share more about how he was able to help the school and the teachers migrate to online learning in, in about a week, uh, which is an amazing feat in itself. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, our next speaker. Uh, he is the president and founder of Thames International Business School based in Manila, Philippines. May I introduce Mr. Joel Santos. Thanks, Roy. Roy, can you turn on my video? It's locked there. Okay, we will turn on your video. Okay. How's that? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Take it away, Joel. Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, uh, I'm delighted to be here to share our experiences. I'm going to share my screen. So a um, little bit of background. So I'm a co-founder of Thames International Business School. The school was founded uh, 20 years ago. We were the Philippines' first international college. We we're mainly known for our international education where students do two years in the Philippines and they finish off in the UK, Australia, or Singapore. Um, we're also a pioneer in entrepreneurial education, um, particularly uh, all of our programs have an entrepreneurial spin to it, whether it's in business administration or communications. Now, um, ever since Gen Z started to enter the, uh, the educational setting, we had to adjust the way we run things. So it's smaller sizes, experiential le learning, and all of our lecturers have always been actual practitioners. We then migrated to a flipped classroom approach. It means 40% online and about 60% face-to-face uh, because we felt this was really best for the, digitally, the digital native, which is Gen Z. So we've been technology enabled for the past two years. But having said that, we were not prepared for what we're experiencing now. So what I wanted to share with you is basically, how do you migrate to online learning in seven days when you don't have a choice? So there were warning signs in January. Uh, the COVID-19 situation blew up in China. And by February, it was rapidly spreading throughout the region. Singapore had uh, most of the cases. And what we noticed was that each time COVID-19 hits an area in China, all the schools will be asked to close and shift to online learning. So we already saw what the future would be once COVID-19 or the virus spread within the Philippines. So we, as together, we planned our business continuity planning, uh, our BCP. The management team initiated its BCP by saying, what's the risk assessment? When will the virus actually spread to the Philippines. And if it does, what will the government do? And based on practice, we saw that uh, we will most likely be asked to uh, cancel classes. So we made our strategies. Uh, we said, what are the different scenarios? How can we address it? We started planning and we started testing different options, assuming there was a lockdown. And by the week of March 9, 2020, our Philippine government gave an indicator that there will be a potential lockdown. So from our point of view as management, it's time to rock. In a crisis situation, schools are very, um, in a crisis situation, one has to be agile and adjust very quickly. The traditional school on a normal situation will be very hierarchical and very bureaucratic. We threw out all of this hierarchy and just divided the whole school into four clusters. The most important cluster was the student experience because they're our main customer. We had to make sure that when we get locked down that number one, they can study anywhere because they cannot go to the campus. It's still seamless so that 
it's still the, the quality education that we promise to deliver them. And the third is that it should include socialization because they still have to feel the community of being together with their classmates and friends. So technology enhancements in the, the other cluster, we started searching and adapting all technologies. We now have to move all our processes, not just education, into online. That means operation services. We started training, training, and more training. On the academic services, because we were in the middle of our term, we had to make sure our online registration and enrollment was working. If not, we were going to lose the students. Uh, because if there's an announcement that there's no classes, then most of the parents might say, there's no need to enroll because classes are canceled anyway. We had to empower the lecturers through training, as I mentioned. We made sure the students had all the information they need for the FAQs. And we set up a help desk for the lecturers, the students, and the parents. Now, migrating to the other cluster is the virtual campus. We had to make sure we had all the systems and processes that had the ability to work, teach, study at home. We prepared all the payments for the suppliers and our salaries. And we ensured that when the lockdown happens, that our community is well and they had food supply. So when the lockdown finally happened, we only had three days to prepare after the announcement of the government. So we worked from March 12 to 15, three days, non-stop, no sleep, migrated to Free Jew uh, of Akkad Asia, mainly because we felt this was the right platform for us in this particular moment. We had another LMS, but the Free Jew platform fit what we needed. Plus, more than that, Friju came with teacher training, which is, I think, for us the most critical. We converted all our processes to online, and the lecturer training was started by Akad Asia. But we, as a TEMS transformation team, had to make sure that the lecturer training of Akad Asia was also contextualized within the Philippine setting. And finally, we went on a communication roadshow. We had Zoom conferences with students and parents. This was to allay the fears that the campus or the school will be closing down. We, we, we assured them that we're going to go online and we're going to give them a seamless experience. This allowed, actually, the parents and the students to be confident to still enroll in the school. So on March 16, after one week, Thames International opened as a virtual school. Everything was operating except the physical campus. So this, is, this was me doing different student conferences. Paris Hilton is not my student. That's my student who was just trying to be funny. This is the Free Jew platform uh, that we used. Uh, the lecturers, after being trained, started uploading content. As you can see, the videos, these are local videos of successful Filipino entrepreneurs and other content. This is another class being held for the postgraduate students. We were able to do workshops, you know, break them down into the groups because of the technology. We continued on with the exercises. And that's a class picture. And at the end of it all, after one week, the students actually, in some of the Instagram stories, said, you know, learning never stops at Thames. So what's the result after the first week? March 21, Saturday, 71% of the students were able to enroll. So we were able to recover 71% of our students who would have been lost if we didn't migrate online. And for those who didn't have access to the banks because everything was closed, we tried to find another facility that can take the payment. 85% 80, of our students were enrolled with the Free Jew account, and 96% of our lecturers were trained by Free Jew. So subsequent trainers are still scheduled with the Thames Transformation Team in Akadesha because we, training doesn't stop because we have to ensure the rapid, the rapid upskilling of the lecturers, lecturers to be online lecturers. 
And finally, 73% of all of our classes have started successfully as an online class with also a very successful pilot of a three full days of a postgraduate workshop. I think the best way to check how we did is through testimonials from the students. So I'll read one of them. Thames did a good job of humanizing technology. The online class experience went really smoothly and beyond expectations. The quality of learning that we received was no less than what we could have received if the classes were done in a face-to-face -face setup. Next testimonial from another student. Never thought it would be that easy to have a full classroom experience completely online. Still got to interact with classmates, have group consultations and individual presentations through an online platform while receiving the same level of care and knowledge as in a normal classroom setup. Carefully planned and thoughtfully executed. Thank you, Thames. And finally, a lecturer testimonial. It was a good day in the end. I'm happy with my class. Perfect attendance. All focus on interactive discussions. Deliver the quiz. Surprised with the quality of responses. The online, part the online participation exceeded my expectations. Uh, as Mark mentioned, the lecturer is the catalyst. And they're essential to this whole process. And um, if in COVID-19, the, the frontliner is the people in the medical field, in education, online education, the frontliner is the lecturer. So sharing a quote, they used to be the sage on the stage. As on the face-to-face, -face, they handle everything. They, they are the ones to be listened to. But the sage on the stage expectation has been transformed to the role of a guide on the side. Teachers are now journey companions of students in the discovery of knowledge. They, to get this thing to work, there's a change of methodology, adjustment of pedagogy, and more importantly, a change of mindset. This won't happen if the lecturer thinks that I just migrate from what my face-to-face -face was and just go online. It's not like that. There's a whole process to that. And that's where really equipping and training lecturers is uh, critical. And that's where uh, Ahad Asia came to our rescue to ensure that uh, our lecturers are able to transform very quickly. So my learning is this, to go online, Execution needs to be a systemic approach in all three aspects. People, process, technology. Systemic means they all have to work and function together. If one doesn't work, it will not be executed well. People, as I said, the staff, the managers, the lecturers, the students have to be on board. The processes have to be aligned to an online learning environment. And in terms of technology, they all have to be prepared for, whether it's bandwidth, connectivity, and any type of technology. We, we are working with the biggest telco in the Philippines to make sure that we continue to be technology enabled as we progress. Because for now, online learning is here to stay and it's the new normal. And if they don't work systemically, then there's no point doing it. It's all or nothing. Because if it's not systemic with all three people, process and technology, it's bound to fail. So, we're sharing this one because as a fellow educator, we're all going through this crisis together. Let no school be left behind. Uh, when we're hit with the lockdown, we cannot let the education of our students stop. So we are here to help. Uh, these are the emails and contact details of uh, our team. And anybody can also get inputs from us of how we went through this journey. Uh, we're in this thing together as educators. We're also the frontliners. Thank you very much.